Hi there, this is Chris Jana, Education Director from the Historical Museum at Fort Missoula, and we have here Chef Bison, aka Zeke, helping Hello. me out today. Um, as you guys uh, know, we are doing a history from, or sorry, holidays from home presentation today about baking cookies. I know a lot of folks voted on our cookie questionnaire about their favorite cookies, so today we're going to be baking cookies, and we're going to make sugar cookies this time. Um, so, we're going to get started, and as we go, um, we've got some fun little history bits and tidbits, so if you are watching, feel free to say hello or give us a like. I've got my laptop set up, too, so I, we can answer questions if people have um, any questions while we're cooking. So I'm going to scoot this guy over here. We've got Brian is watching us today. Sweet. Thanks, Brian. And Sweet. we're going to get going. So... Zika Rooney, yep. would you mind? The first thing we need to do is we need to cream the butter and the sugar. All right. So uh, let's find our recipe real quick here. I believe we need three fourths of a cup of butter, unsalted, softened to room temperature. And so that's going to be a stick and a half, right? Yep. And that's going to go in our mixer. I'll move this a little bit so you can see what we're doing with the mixer over here, too. And so Zeke's the glorious, butter. the glorious butter. We do enjoy butter. We also have our history hounds helping us out today, but they are helping us out by sleeping. So probably once any interesting things happen, um, they'll come over and say hello too. So if you guys have a favorite memory of baking cookies with family, you can share that with us. And I'm gonna grab a measuring cup and the sugar ready. Hello. <laughs> So, what I noticed with... Are you right over there? Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. fine. Everything's um, fine. Everything's fine. Why would you ever think anything other than fine? <laughs> I noticed that we have uh, equal parts of butter and sugar here for these sugar cookies, so I've got my three-fourths of a cup measuring. Oh, I should have mentioned, we've got some things over here that you're going to need later if you're baking along with us. You're going to need some a room temperature egg, so pop your egg out of the fridge if you're working on cookies with us today and you're going to need some vanilla and the link for this uh, cookie recipe is also on the Facebook page as well. So we got to do three-fourths of a cup of granulated sugar. Got my handy little pour spout here. Should I start getting all the dry ingredients? Sure. Together? Yeah, Zeke's going to get the dry ingredients together while we're creaming the butter and sugar. Remember, Zeker, with the flour, you need to spoon it into the cup and then level it. We got this fancy little leveler here, there, too. I discovered that last night. Oh, really? Right. Yep. Oh, that's cool. All right, so we are creaming the butter over here. Oh, yeah, that's not flour on the paper. Got this handy dandy little um, KitchenAid mixer, uh, courtesy of my wonderful mother. And, but you can imagine people have been making cookies for hundreds of years before electricity and just using their muscles and a wooden spoon. So if you're a die-hard uh, traditionalist, you might choose to cream your butter that way. So put it over the top there when you... <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> oh, you missed that. Zeke's over here leveling some the oh, flour here. Oh, it's okay. You need to... Yes. Here, let me help you out here. Yes. This is, I just sprung this on Zeke here. So when you're <laughs> measuring flour, you don't want to pack it in there because then it kind of changes the amount of flour. And if you lived in the UK or Europe, you probably are measuring your flour by weight anyway. So we've got it too full and then we just level it like that. Make sense? Okay. There you go. I'll give that back to you then. All right, Karen. Karen says the museum sure looks different. <laughs> That's for sure. How many cups of butter do you need? Two. Oh, right. So while Zeke is measuring, our butter is creaming with the sugar over here. I want to make it kind of fluffy. And Zeke is measuring our flour. We're gonna clean as we go too, so I'm throwing away wrappers. Oh, we got my history hound in the kitchen supervising.
So we got Sif down here on the floor. She's the more mellow of the history hound here. Also the one who would definitely help eat the cookies if given the opportunity. Brian said, oh yeah, Brian says his mom left the butter out to soften and then just creamed it with a fork. I think that would probably work just fine. My mixer might be a little bit overkill. All right, so Zeker's measuring out the dry ingredients. What else do we need? We need... You need, so we've got two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, mm -hmm. half a teaspoon of baking powder. Okay. So here's that for you. I got the oh, you got here over here. Yep, Sweet. I'm half prepared. And then you're going to have a quarter teaspoon of salt in there with it. We're almost out of salt, but we've got some there. Okay, now while Zeke's doing that, I'm going to add my room temperature egg. So I remember oh, to take this out earlier. My husband teased me that I was measuring, very carefully measuring one egg into here. Um, I'm going to break this egg into this measuring cup because my grandma always told me not to break it into the mixer itself. That way if you get a rotten egg, then it won't hurt anything. Or you can see your eggshells better that way too. So egg is going in here. And then we're also going to add the vanilla and the almond extract. So this recipe is a little bit different. This one came from Sally's Baking Edition, I think is the website. And it calls for both uh, vanilla and almond extract. I grabbed my almond and I forgot my vanilla, so I'll be back. So I will stand in the frame instead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna, are you done with those guys? Are you yes. still? All right. Sift these or mix it up a little bit. If we were purists, we might be sifting our flour and things, but I don't actually have a sifter, which is kind of sad since I work at a historical museum and I and and we have a sifter that we use for programs. So I'm gonna have to get one of these one of these days. Okay, so we put our egg in, and now we're gonna need two teaspoons pure vanilla extract. So two of these guys in here. Can you see me? Oh, sorry, I am okay. taking up the whole entire left corner. <laughs> There's <Hello. Zika. laughs> And then we're going to add our almond. This one calls for a quarter or a half teaspoon of almond extract. It's optional, but I think that it helps a lot. So I'm actually going to do a half because I like almond. If you didn't like almond, you wouldn't have to add that, of course. Does anybody have a favorite sugar cookie recipe that has something kind of weird in it? Like, I've heard uh, cream of tartar in some of them. All right, mixing up our egg and such. Bring you over here again so you can check it out. We got eggs and the extract. I wish you could smell it. This is when you need smell-o-vision because it, the almond extract just smells amazing. So I'm going to have to scrape this down a little bit before we put the flour in there because it's obviously still added to the, um, sorry, the butter sticking to the side. But we'll get it mixed up there. Zeker's working some magic on our computer over here so we can see both. And We'll do a little bit of easy icing later, but is anybody a big fan of royal icing? I think that's the ones that make it really pretty, but I haven't tried those before. So we're just gonna go for the easy stuff today. All right, so Zeke is double checking the recipe. Always a good plan. Um, one of the reasons why as a museum we're doing this cookie baking right now is because normally we'd have our lantern tours and I have a fantastic group of volunteers who make cookies for us like Claudia Brown and Miney Smith and Deb Caffrey and gosh so many nice people make cookies for our lantern tours so if you come for lantern tours if you live in Missoula you've probably enjoyed having a variety of Christmas cookies this year or not this year but in previous years and you will get to watch lantern tours virtually it's not the same as tromping around with a lantern outside but it'll be pretty fun anyway so here's our preparation for that. Instead of collecting volunteer cookies, we're just making them here today. And actually, I'm gonna have too many cookies, so if you live in Missoula and you need some cookies, uh, let me know and I can drop some off contact-free. Okay. Flour goes in there. Yep, you wanna do that, kiddo? 
All right, so we're just doing one last little mix since I scraped down the side. And then Zeke's gonna add our flour, our flour mixture to it here. So, let's turn this off first. <laughs> ah! <laughs> it's a good thing I don't have to run a cooking show. <laughs> All right, Zeker, put some of those guys, some of that in there. Oh my gosh. We're doing not the whole thing at a time. Yeah, that's not a great angle. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so you can plop that down and mix some of it up while I clean up my mess. I'm, um, I'm too tall. <laughs> yeah, Zeker's a little tall for... Got my bison go. hat on. Yeah, you check that out. That, that's but... nice. We both have really good headgear today, but it's... Uh, we're a little tall for the way the camera is set up. That's probably the first time I've ever gotten to say that I'm too tall for something. <laughs> so some of you may have come here. Ooh, pepper nuts, pepper nuts cookie. Oh, okay. So Brian is commenting that they do pepper nuts Christmas cookies. Let me show you what I made this morning. And those of you who know me in real life have had these before. These are Icelandic pepper pepper cookies because my family's from Iceland, but they're probably really close to what you're used to as a pepper noose. So, I, I'm picking up what you're putting down there, Brian. <laughs> doing a weird dance. Oh, this is great. Very We're very professional. Yeah. yeah. You didn't come here for a professional yep. cooking show, though. You came here to watch us be goofy. So, that is, that's all the flour and stuff in there. Yep. So while it kind of finishes up there, I will tell you a few little historical tidbits about cookies. So the first cookies were con conceived 10,000 years ago when Neolithic farmers baked food co compromising of a grain water paste on hot stones. Um, that ha kind of happens all over the world if you think about all the pancakes and versions of pancakes that are all over the world. Um, cookies are said to be the result of a devised plan associated with practicality, not a ritualistic offering to Santa for a prosperous gift season. Speak for yourself, internet. We all know the truth. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. We're okay. We're all good. Um, uh, with the 16th century, Christmas cookies were all the rage in medieval Europe. German families baked up pans of Lebkuchen, gingerbread, and buttery spritz cookies, Papa Cocker, which is a lot like um, we were just talking about the pepper new spicy ginger and black pepper delights, were favorites in Sweden. Norwegians made Crum cake or crum kaka, which were thin lemon and cardamom scented wafers. And then the Reformation brought about the church bake sale. <laughs> yeah, I should have read this ahead of time. This is yeah. funny stuff, though. Um, the earliest examples of Christmas cookies in the United States were brought by the Dutch in the 17th century due to a wide range of cheap imported products from Germany between 1871 and 1906, following a change to importation <laughs> laws. Cookie cutters became available in the U.S. Okay, guys, so no no um, gingerbread men or, let me see, I've got a bear cookie cutter here. So bear cookie cutters came around in 1906 um, because of a change in importation laws. Uh, in 1902, Nab Nabisco got in on hanging food on trees with its animal crackers. I'm pretty sure animal crackers were the first American um, version of um, commercial cookies. And they used... Eight, oh, they put the strings on the box of the Nabisco crackers, and then you hung them on the tree with the string. I don't know if Nabisco crackers still or cookies still have the string on the box, but I kind of remember that from animal cookies, like on the front part. So if you have bought animal cookies recently, let me know if that's still the case. Okay, we'll get back to our cookie situation here, and we'll do more weird trivia later. All right, so Zeke, what you got down there? Dough? Dough. Okay. So this is the part that's going to be disappointing if you didn't read the recipe ahead. We have to chill the cookies yeah. um, for a long time. So you Guess guys we'll are just, just have to end the stream. Or we could just entertain them with stories. Oh, for two for, hours. For hours. Yeah, isn't that what you guys wanted? Not professionalism, stories, whole time. <laughs> History is made of stories. Okay, so we're going to scrape all the goodness off of this and... Um, if you guys were running away because you thought you're gonna have to sit here and listen to us talk about random stuff for two hours, don't worry. We made a batch yesterday, so through the magic of television, we'll be able to sh to roll out some cookies with you. But if you are baking along at home, or if you watch this later and you want to make this, um, once you've got all your ingredients together, 
you have a couple of different options. So the recipe says to roll it out on parchment paper and then put it in the fridge, but when I did that, I didn't really like the way it turned out. So other recipes I've read had me put the cookie dough into plastic wrap and then chill the plastic or chill the plastic wrapped cookie dough for a couple of hours and then roll it out. So that's what I would recommend doing. Just form it into like kind of a disc or maybe two discs to make it easier to roll out. And then chill it until you're ready to roll it out. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what this looks like in its current state. Oop, down to the table. Okay, so we've got all of our goodness in here. It smells really good like almond, which I'm digging. Well, I made it last night. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so we got our dough here. I'm just going to try and get all of it out. No cookie left behind. So I got into making Christmas cookies with my grandma. And Brian already mentioned his mom's method for creamy butter there. Does anybody else out there watching have traditions? Maybe you make cookies with your kids each year. Or they make it with their grandparents. I know my friend Karen's out there. Karen and Emily and I made boatloads of cookies when we were in high school. That was like our our Christmas tradition. So if you happen to be a friend of mine from high school, you're probably thinking, oh yeah, I remember getting a plate of cookies from Christiana and Emily. And, um, okay, pausing for a second, pausing the story. So I've got my dough ball here, and I'm going to fight the battle with the saran wrap to just... Put it in the fridge to chill for one to two hours. You could even do it overnight. When you unwrap this, it's going to be super sticky, so you're going to end up with a floured surface to put it on. All right, I'm going to hand this off to Zeke Rooney. He can put it in the fridge and grab our other dough if he can find it. Where's the other dough? I guess I'll find the other dough. <laughs> I don't know where it is. <laughs> That looks like a leak. Yeah, it, it didn't look like dough. It's in a plastic bag. So, Emily and Karen and I used to make uh, sugar cookies with my grandma's um, cookie cutters. And she had sort of the traditional ones, like a Christmas tree and a bell and things like that. But she also had a shark. <laughs> so we always had like traditional and then a shark. So then when I technically became a grown-up, um, I ended up with lots of dinosaurs. And if you know me and Zeker, we like bison. And um, my dad's name is Bjorn, so we have a bear. That means, Bjorn means bear in Icelandic. And we have a squirrel. This is a shout out to my Aunt Gusta, who's in Iceland, who always sends me um, memes with woodland creatures. I don't think they have squirrels in Iceland, but squirrels are often on my feed. Okay, concentrating here. Let me clear the decks a little bit and then we'll roll out some cookies. All right, clearing the decks. Okay, so the recipe said originally to roll out your dough on a lightly floured parchment paper. So I did that. Um, and then put it in the fridge. Unfortunately, this is kind of how it turned out. So it's like cracked basically from kind of not drying out, but it's a little bit cold. So I'm gonna flour my table a little bit and then we're gonna roll it out again. That's sugar. In the meantime, Zeke, do you want to um, start making or looking up that recipe for the easy icing that's attached? Yeah. I think it's pretty much just milk and um, most of the easy icing is milk and powdered sugar, yeah, right? Milk and powdered sugar. Yeah. Okay, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. Okay, so we have some pretty sticky dough here. And I'm gonna put it so you can see it down here. That's my flowery hand. 
Okay, so we got our floured surface here. I promise it was clean. We washed our hands. I forgot to say that at the beginning, but I think everybody is so used to washing their hands now. I'm sure you all washed your hands before you got started. So I'm going to warm this up a little bit just because it was too cold the first time I did it this today. Cold fridge. We have a cold fridge. That's good, though. Okay, so probably when you're doing this, you can imagine that you've got your um, round of dough that's been chilling for a little while. And you can pretend it didn't crack like mine did. Okay, Zeke's gonna make that icing. That's what we're whispering about. <laughs> I'm gonna roll these guys out. Enough. All right, so I've got my clean rolling pin. I've got flour on it. I've got a little chunk of dough, and it's cold, so it's hard to roll out. But that's good. You want it to be cold so that things hold their shape and they don't stick to the counter. We're aiming for quarter of an inch thickness, and that's right, I am going to measure a quarter of an inch. Because I've got my, I'm sure they uh, pass these out in culinary arts school. So a quarter of an inch is actually so a little bit bigger than I thought. So here's an inch, half inch, quarter of an inch. That's probably why my pepper cookies were so crispy this time. Okay, is this? Yeah, yeah probably just a little bit thin. We're gonna call it good. All right, and what you're gonna want to have ready uh, to put them on are a couple of cookie sheets. I already took it out for you. It's the small one right there. Oh. Yeah, it's felt and asleep. <laughs> okay, so I have a couple of cookie sheets here. Check your recipe, some of them say parchment paper, some of them say um, just dry. We've got our rolled out little bit of dough there, and it's always a challenge to figure out how to make them, how to get the most cookies out um, before you have to re-roll it. Because the more you re-roll it, the more you're gonna end up with flour in it. So we got a bison. Another trick is that if you have lots of cookie cutters and they're different sizes, you might want to put all the big guys on one and all the little guys on another. Because probably my dinosaur isn't going to take as much time to cook. So I'll put him on my second cookie sheet. This is assuming that we're making a boatload of cookies here. Which we're making, we're making like a good half a boatload today. <laughs> okay, this is going to sound a little bit crass, but trust me it's not. Uh, it turns out, if you ever heard anybody say a buttload of something, that is actually a real term dating to nautical times that is an actual measurement. So it's not as crass as it sounds, but we'll stick to boatload. What you looking for, Zeke? I found it. Okay. We're getting there. We're doing things. At about a snail's pace, but that's okay. I have a snail cut. I have a snail cookie cutter if we wanted to do snails. All right, so we're going to check in with what Zeke's up to over here. Ah, so Zeeker. Oh, he's got the computer. And... He's got the rest of wheat. Our printer's not working right, so what you got over there in your bowl? I got confectioner's sugar. And we're about to add some vanilla extract. Okay, and then what else is going in there? Looks uh, like some corn syrup. Yeah, some corn syrup, and we're going to add water instead of milk. Oh, interesting. This so this is a little bit different from the recipe that we made before. Um, sometimes I've made uh, cookie recipes where we put almond extract in the um, icing as well. But this one is going for vanilla. Okay. Does anybody have any weird cookie cutters at home? Like that they absolutely every year they have to have a pickle cookie. Or um, maybe you're like me and you've got dinosaurs. Or... Maybe you're, you're a traditionalist when it comes to your cookies and you only want Christmas shapes. Does anybody make sugar cookies for other holidays? I know there's some folks in Missoula that have cookie baking businesses and they make the most beautiful, ornate, um, decorated, like airbrushed cookies. These are not those cookies. These ones are gonna be more like 
when we decorate them, they'll be like Jackson Pollock paintings. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but they'll taste good. We got sprinkles. We got all sorts of stuff. All right, I'm trying to extract this dinosaur. Dinosaur goes on the small one. Okay, so already this is getting too small for cutting them out. Okay, Brian says a buttload is two hogsheads. Well, that clears things up. Now that I, I can totally picture a hogshead. Okay, so I'm gonna roll this out again. We'll try one more time with this. Can you guys do living history baking? Living history baking, that's a really good question. So someone asked if we we're doing living history baking. Um, we haven't in the past. We have had demonstrations out at the court, but not about cooking, but that would be really great to do. Um, the reason why we're doing this today, one of the reasons why is we have been toying with the idea of having like a recipe competition where we tell you about a couple of different historic recipes and then you guys vote on which one you want to see us try to cook. Um, so it'll be sort of a living history one, although we won't be first person li living history. We won't be pretending that we're back in the time. It'll be more like explaining it. So uh, good question though. Let's see. I'm going to grab a couple of different cookie cookie cutters. Ooh, that must have sounded lovely. We're going to add a moose to the mix since we're in Montana. Is everybody out there from Montana? I thought I might have seen my friend Heidi who's in Colorado, but you guys have mooses out there. Heidi and I once saw a moose while we were snowboarding in Wyoming. That was pretty neat. Um, do, 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 do. It's hard to extract the moose legs. Let's see if I can find another. You need to work. Okay. There you go. Okay, let's see if we can get one more moose out of this. And then we'll roll out the other one. And then, just in case you're wondering, how long do I have to wait until I see the Jackson Pollock mooses? Um, you don't have to wait too long because while these guys are cooking, of course, um, while these guys are cooking, we can decorate the ones that I made this morning. Should be fun. And then Zeke and I can eat them. What color? What color? Yeah. Whatever color you want. There's some food coloring. So Zeke is making his icing over there and we have some food coloring that we're gonna color it with. We can make a couple of, we can like divide that up into a couple different colors, Kittle. Yeah. Mix all the colors together. <laughs> well, we do have bison and uh, moose, so we could have brown cookies, but I feel like if you're gonna make brown icing, it might as well be um, chocolate, right? Okay, so we've talked about pepper cookies, and we've talked about sugar cookies. Does anybody have... Somebody saying hello from Helena? Mm -hmm. Great. Hello to friends in Helena. Just over the... over a couple passes from here. Zeker's looking for the, the best icing bowl. Okay, so we'll do a couple more mousse. Let's see if we got any more comments on there. Oh, I didn't know Brian was in Helena. Brian, I see you comment on our stuff. You must be a, a history buff. If you live in Missoula, I heard a rumor that Santa's gonna do a flyover today. I think it starts at 6.30. And if you check around on Facebook or Google Santa Flyover Missoula, you can see where you can spot him. One of my little history tidbits suggested that um, the tradition of leaving cookies for Santa Claus came about in the during the Depression when a lot of people were struggling and it was a way to sort of encourage giving and thinking of others to kiddos. I know that we always left cookies um, for Santa Claus 
and sometimes I've heard that folks leave um, carrots for the reindeer, which I think is really nice. That didn't occur to me when I was little, though. Dookie. Gonna add a couple bison on here, and then we'll stick them in the oven. Okay, and I didn't get very many on my small one, so hey. So this year we're going to do a big Christmas dinner on Christmas Eve. When I, that's my husband's family's tradition, Zeke's grandparents' tradition. And so we're going to make a, big, make a big turkey this year. I know a lot of people do Christmas ham, and sometimes at my parents' house they do prime rib. And I've known other families that just do really fun snacks during for Christmas meals, which I think is a great idea too. So if you guys have favorite Christmas meals or things you absolutely have to have for Christmas dinner or it doesn't make, mean it's Christmas dinner, let me know. I've also heard folks do fun um, breakfasts and brunches and things. What you looking for, child, ma'am? Fork. Fork for all of them or you want spoons because we're going to need to use the spoons to decorate with, right? It looks like it might be a little thin. You might have to add some more. Um, Icing to that or sugar to that. Right. <laughs> so the total difference. In between, yeah, we have a we have show show, show the folks at home. We're working on icing, but green icing in a green Ninja Turtle bowl, so that works. Let me get the last couple out of this one. Then we'll move on to decorating. How about favorite Christmas songs? I used to hate Christmas music. I think that's a phase that everybody goes through when your parents force you to listen to Christmas music. Zeke. Yeah, yeah. Not my favorite. Not Zeke's favorite. And I was the same way. And my mom will know there was a... That song, Silver Bells, we had to sing it for a, um, a Christmas pageant. So if anybody else out there went to Loera Elementary School in Anaheim, California, and was a fifth grader with me, gosh, I don't even know what year that would have been. I guess early 90s. Um, you probably know how many times we had to sing Silver Bells. So for the longest time, I hated the song Silver Bells, and I would like force my family to turn it off when it came on. It's still not my favorite, to be honest. But I only listen to Perry Como Christmas music because that's, like, that's my jam. That or some punk rock Christmas songs, but um, that's a little different. Someone tried to make a goose put on the phone the next time. What'd you say, kiddo? Comments. What, did, what about comments? Uh, someone tried to make a Christmas goose once and it almost burned down the house. Oh, okay. Anybody else have any Christmas cooking disasters there? I've heard stories about... Thanksgiving where people um, were someone was supposed to get a uh, fully cooked turkey and uh, when they went to serve it it had only it had come frozen <laughs> so they had they thought they were just supposed to warm it up for 20 minutes and so obviously they didn't have turkey that day so we have it still seems really runny I guess it doesn't matter too much though um, so we have a Christmas goose that nearly burned down the house. I had friends that made a turducken in Scotland one time and I'm pretty sure dinner came like 12 hours later than planned. Um, we make we make tamales. Tamales is like a tamales are a big Hispanic tradition and I'm not Hispanic but I grew up in Southern California. So we learned how to make tamales to for our wedding. Um, my husband and my wedding Zeke was the ring bison with that hat. Mm -hmm. um, so now we like to give people tamales as presents. And as Heidi's Munchkin said, um, tamales are like little presents of food, which is pretty fun. Um, so if you do live somewhere where you can get tamales, that's something that I think is a common Christmas tradition in some Hispanic families. Okay, Zeker, how yes, long do we need to cook these things for? Uh, let me find out. Okay. So we have our preheated oven ready to go. Do I like this one have a jump to it? Yeah. 
recipe. Do my blending. Instructions. There we go. Ten to twelve minutes. Ten to twelve minutes. Okay, so those guys are going in the oven for ten to twelve minutes. I'm gonna put a timer on. And we're not gonna ask the robot. We're not gonna ask the robot today. Mm. And zeker has got some. Um, I was gonna call it dressing. <laughs> cookie dressing. We got some cookie dressing. Um, yeah, that's fine. You want to come over here and we'll um, decorate the ones we made earlier. Okay, so now again, magical time lapse. We're gonna get the cookies I made this morning. I'm definitely yeah, 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 yeah. cookies. Cookies are good. <laughs> okay, so what we have in our array here of options, we've got um, blue and yellow and green and the turtle. And we have two sets of sprinkles, got some snowflakes over here. This one looks like a couple more than two. That one's got a large variety. <laughs> so, you want to open that one, kiddo? Yeah, sure. It's always good to be prepared with places to have set up to dry your cookies because they're going to be sticky. So, I should have this. Just stare at the camera while I'm rattling this. <laughs> it's like, isn't that a, um, a thing? Like, unboxing? But I don't know. Oh. That's, part, that's part of the, the the mysterious parts of the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> we don't go there, okay? <laughs> okay. Pardon the kitchen mess. I do know that there was, there was a story a while ago about this like five year old who ended up starting a YouTube channel where he just unboxed like toys and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then it became a whole legal thing because like you can't have a five year old who's what? like making a lot of money and. It, it was a big problem. All right, so parents at home, in case you were expecting <laughs> your children to make their college funds. Okay, so I have just decorated my bison yellow, and I'm going to put them down here, and let's go with, um, it's like a roulette. have some red sprinkles on him. Ryan was just saying, how do people cook without timers? That's a really good question. And we also, you know, if you think about cooking, some of us may still have wood burning stoves um but those ones might you know obviously you had to create you had to gauge the heat on your own i'm sure that it wasn't too long until there were thermometers that would work with that but a lot of times was just just the knowledge of the machine that you had um i've seen egg timers um you know just wind up timers so those were probably pretty available or um you know the ones that with like the sand in it, basically, for lack of a better term. Um, but I bet there was a lot of checking and looking and deciding. Okay, I'm gonna let you see what our, our cookie masterpieces that are going on here. As we're going. Seeker went with the stripes, I like it. I'm gonna add some. You can add sprinkles to that? I don't know, I think I like it the way it is. Okay. So I always like these little silly silver ball things. But I like to put them on, but I don't like to eat them because <laughs> they're kind of just crunchy. I always think, is this actually food? Are you using this cutting board for anything? That's for, that's for what you're doing. Okay. Yeah. I'm <laughs> just double checking. Yep. So, I saw my friend Jen posted a pretty funny meme uh, today about baking cookies with, or decorating cookies with kiddos. And it was like all of the things that happen um, when you're decorating cookies. If you use it in the right context, you could also imagine that you're in a crime drama or something. So, like, uh, I'll share that in the comments. Just because there's a lot of saying, wash your hands, don't touch that. So if you're working on, like, CSI Miami or something like that. Oh, now they can see what I'm doing over here. I know. Beaker's in there, too. Okay. Oh, we have a white, do we have a white one? I just put the, look at that, I just put the tripod in the, the white. Oh! <laughs> so we don't have a white one anymore. All right. We're the only ones eating this. All right, if you want, if you guys want cookies, um, I won't give you the ones with the white uh, icing on it because I just stuck the tripod leg in it. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. 
It's fine. Yeah, we're being a uh, no one else his saw historical. It. Yeah, and I didn't just announce it to the world either. No, no, that never happened. So I'll eat the scroll. Also, strange things said on the museum's Facebook page. I'll eat the scroll. Okay, so Zeker, what you doing next? I'm reading comments and oh, also okay. looking at what needs to be decorated. Brian in the comments there mentioned that he's he's seen recipes that are for either uh, fast ovens or slow ovens. We also have a random um, video playing in the background on our recipe page, so Zeke is being distracted by grilled cheese sandwiches. Understandable. <laughs> I think Zeke and I have subsisted on cookies and, I don't know, did you eat breakfast this morning? I haven't eaten anything aside from the cookies. Yeah, I've just had cookies and coffee, so that's sort of the way it goes for Christmas time. Why am I doing stripes? I could do sleep. You can do whatever you want. Stripes are nice too, though. Just give it a nice loving spoon touch. So those of you guys with kiddos out there, do you let your kiddos make, uh, decorate the cookies or are you, they all have, uh, of the mindset that they have to be perfect? So obviously you can tell which, which club I belong to, the let's just be messy and have fun. Oh, this guy needs some sprinkles. Squirrels. I got more sprinkles over here too. It's a crispy bear. Some of I did a I did accidentally um, forget to put the timer on for these guys, so they got some brown feetses. Hey, Christiana. Hey, Zeker. You have to bear with me as I tell these puns. <laughs> I'm not sure if the camera actually goes see that, but oh. I had a bear cookie. It's yeah. a it's a bear with bear with. We like puns in this household too. All right, I'm gonna let Zeker decorate this one, and I'm gonna tell you guys oh. some more history stuff. Oh. Oh camera up a little bit. Brian agrees kids get to decorate. Good plan. Okay, so as Zeker decorates, I will read you some silly things. There's Zeker decorating. Um, all right, so. You could, you could. We're getting the Jackson Pollock designs over there. All right, so according to the magical world of the internet, um, and this came from um, Food and Wine, the magazine, uh, they, they tell me that Queen Elizabeth I invented gingerbread men. She didn't cook them herself. She was the queen after all. Uh, but she um, wanted the royal bakers to create gingerbread cookies shaped like the visit visiting dignitaries in order to honor them. So take that one with a grain of salt. We could look that up. Um, cookies were originally made to test oven temperature. According, according to culinary historians, cookies as we know them today were first made not to eat, but to test the temperature of an oven. Cooks would take a small dollop of cake batter and bake it as means of gauging whether the oven was ready or not. So kind of back to what Brian was talking about with ovens and imagining how uh, we planned and cooked things like that. Ooh, gingerbread men were illegal in some places during the Reformation. Martin Luther was not a fan of Christmas in response to his anti-saint stance. Um, the city of Delft in the Netherlands forbade the sale of gingerbread men. Meanwhile, the magistrates of Amsterdam banned all molded cookies as they did, as did the city of Arnhem. And then a little more fun history. No banned cookies here. Santa Claus eats over 300 million cookies on Christmas Eve. Every Christmas Eve, Santa visits over 500 million homes where he encounters about a billion cookies. If you hypothesize that he takes about two bites of each cookie he's given, it means he eats a total of 336,150,386 cookies. So my dad, the cookie monster, Bjorn, um, you're just a little bit behind there. So, you know, keep that number in mind when you're eating your cookies. This. Also, you don't need to be challenging that. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps not the best bet to try to, to beat Santa in the cookie game, huh? All right, so our cookies here are getting decorated and just about done. So I think we will probably let you guys all go, but thanks for joining us today. And keep an eye out on the Historical Museum's Facebook account because we're going to be doing some um, recipe challenges in the winter as we're getting bored and trying to figure out how to entertain ourselves. So keep an eye on that. You can always test um, the prowess of 
Zeke and my cooking cooking skills huh. um, to make something like I don't know. We'll find something weird and historical to make. Sure. So thanks for joining us today. Um, give me a holler if you live in Missoula and you need any cookies. And have a Merry Christmas or a Happy Holiday, whatever it is that you celebrate. And we'll see you again next time.